Okay, so hey everyone, welcome to uh, the seventh now implementers call for Forge 4.4. A uh, bunch of things to cover today, as usual, testing, specs, devnets. Um, to start, uh, though, Giorgio is going to give us an update on uh, the large block testing because he has to hop. Um, yeah, Giorgio, do you want to recap what happened in the past week or so? Yeah, thank you, Tim. So the update from last week is that previously we were blocked on providing transactions that are bigger than 128 kilobytes because of the TX pool limit. We got plugged into the Flashbots builder, which itself is connected to a good amount of relays who are in turn plugged into a good amount of hash rate on Gurley, um, which let us submit bundles uh, which had one megabyte transactions. So we got a few blocks with one megabyte transactions. We got a bunch of blocks with 10 or more 128 kilobyte transactions. We can do it reliably. So now we're at the point where over the weekend, we got some blocks that were bigger and some people were monitoring their networks, etc. So now the next step is for us to improve our bin packing for the bundle, i.e. kind of like optimally bundle as many, well, like one megabyte plus one, 520, 5, 512 kilobyte plus one, 256 kilobyte plus one, 100, you know, whatever. Um, to basically make the block as big as possible. Um, so that's the one thing that we need to improve to make the benchmark better. And the second thing that we'd like to improve is how reliably we can get multiple bundles included in a row because we get outbid by others and uh, I just haven't figured out yet why we're getting outbid. Um, so if there's more hash rate that we can get, to if there's more stake that we can get inside of the system to make bundle inclusion more reliable, that would be really nice. So that's the progress update. Um, another thing that we'd like to do is to start running this for the 4844 devnets like proper um, because the code path might be different. And also more importantly, because there is this mempool verification. There's a bunch of like new verification code for KCG, which we're not touching obviously right now with the call data benchmarks. So TLDR, the benchmark has been done at small scale. We're trying to make it at bigger scale and we'd like to try it also out for 4804 in the near future. I mean, happy to answer any questions or brainstorm or discuss if there's anything there. So we have a third of the network running MEV boost on Gordy. Um, do we know another big chunk of validators who is not currently running MEV boost? So I know client teams have like a fair amount of validators. I assume the ones who are involved in this are running it, but I don't know, does anyone have an idea of who we could reach out to to, to add a bunch more? So all the client teams together should be roughly 80 or 90% of Gurley. So definitely not all the client teams are running. As far as I know, just the EF and I, I would, if I had to guess, it would be Prisms running it, but I'm not sure about the other one. Uh, Pegu is running 5K validators. On Gurley, uh, but uh, we're using Flashbot. So you you were, um, so the bids were coming from Flashbot's relay on, on, on Gurley? Yeah, and I think that's, a, that's what we're using for this. So you would already okay. be part. So we were part of it. But if I understand correctly, I think Teku has more than 5K validators, so it's, there should be more that aren't running it. Yeah, but not all are running under MEV boost. Yeah. So I, think, I, think... No, I think no need for us like to go back and forth on this necessarily. Like, but if you guys know more people that we could like put on girly move boost, that would be fantastic. And Tim, it's so I just messaged him that I've been bidding with point one ETH. Um 
it doesn't need to be more like the bids like i looked at all the historical bids on uh, mainnet and like anytime yeah anytime i get outbid it's because somebody like just looks at my bid and outbids me so it's not like um it's not like it's it's not a static system like other people are also trying to get their bundles in because they're screwing around um but yeah like if people want to send me a bunch of like girl leads i'd be happy to take it with okay yeah so right now are, we're only getting these big blocks in through medboost yeah only and medboost medboost generically or do you have to hit uh they have to be connected to like flashbots or a particular relay i'm submitting to anything that conforms to the ETH and bundle api okay so if we ran an analog of this experiment on mainnet we would likely be able to hit a fairly large amount due to something like greater than 60 percent being connected in Mebus. of course of okay. course cool. yeah yeah this this is designed so that it's kind of like you know one click change for mainnet got it and and that's why to me it's important that i get the bidding algorithm proper and the bin piking algorithm proper so that you know i don't want to be overpaying for all my blocks on mainnet like Okay. Yeah, and we can look. Uh, yeah, we, we we can look uh, offline um, if there are clusters of quality validators that we're aware of that we can uh, reach out to. Um, yeah, the the main ask. So the main ask from the group is to just make sure that people's metrics APIs are up, and if people are going on this, um, or if there is like somebody that's blo blocked or whatever, like let us know um because i think this week by the end of this week we'll have like we'll have productionized this or whatever you want to call it um and then we want to start hammering like reliably like all the time got it and i, I would like i would like to run this for like 10 minutes for example like i don't want to run this for like five blocks perry and others do we have initial metrics insights like things seem like we're gathering the data that we need yeah, that's actually one of the asks I've shared, um, or Andrew shared a couple of dashboards earlier today. If you guys could have a look and let us know if something more needs to be added, then we can work on that over the next week. But right now, based on what we've seen, there's been no, like, there's no cause for concern. Like, nothing changed, nothing was unexpected. To be clear, I don't think that we should be using the data that we got so far as signal because we haven't run really anything serious, right? Like having Yeah, like... we just need to know that we're getting the data. Yeah, 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 of course. Just making explicit that the fact that we got, you know, three one megabyte blocks or three two megabyte blocks actually, like with one megabyte transactions in over the weekend doesn't really mean anything yet. Yeah, and I think I got some of these metric dashboards. Thank you, buddy. Yannick's attestation analysis that he just put out um, using some of those tools. This is all on-chain data that might be really valuable as well. I just shared the blog post. Cool, thank you all. Sweet, anything else on this? Okay. Um, we had a couple spec uh, PRs issues uh, from last time and, and, and new ones that we want to cover real quick. Um, first one, uh, DAP Lion had uh, this uh, PR 3141. Um, I don't think he's on the call. Oh, and Danny, I think you literally just commented on it uh, 30 minutes ago. Anything? We should discuss here about it. Um, so I think, from my understanding, I think there's generally agreement to not allow this to grow unbounded in times of non-finality. So I think then, one to reduce complexity and two to kind of know the the load that's happening here. Um, I think the question really becomes: Do you 
an unbounded in non finalized period if you're trying to reorg to something that you don't know is available of more than an 18 day or whatever the prune depth is do you say is data available is true or do you say is data available is false i think there's certainly some edge case to that attack scenarios to kind of consider here uh, also some some ux around if your client was offline and what the recovery modes look like um so it's it's kind of some trade-offs I think still to discuss. Uh, happy to discuss a bit more here if people have questions about the state of the conversation, but also it seems like we're pretty active on the thread. Anyone have any other thoughts, comments on this? Okay, so yeah, we can just continue that uh, async. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Terrence, uh, we had uh, your issue also from last time, uh, uh, 3125. Um, it seems like this is just ready to merge. Is that correct? Yep, ready to okay. merge. Nice. Yeah, I think I, I'm good other than if you can just change the header comment to say what this does yep. now, um, just for posterity, because it, it's a bit confusing if you read that. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay, and then the last one, I think it's another one that Lion asked uh, for uh, 3113. Um, so, oh, wait, is this the exact same thing? No, 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 this is not the same thing as the previous one. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember what we discussed about this last time. Um, is Sean or anyone that's been on this yeah. can give us a TLDR or... Um, oh, uh, Enrico uh, as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah, both of them are here, yeah. Um, yeah, so the issue is about <clears throat> how we want to handle cases where uh, we need to make a, like, get block and blob by root request for a missing parent block. Um, because when we do this, we don't know like at what slot the parent is. Um, so that means we could be making a query for like before the 4844 epoch, for example. So we don't know whether to make a <clears throat> request for a block and blob or request for a block based on like the current spec. So the appline suggesting this might be a reason to uncouple the block and blob request because then you sort of have like just an optional sidecar in that scenario. And then the other solution we were considering was um, making the response to the block and blob by root request be in enum, like a union type in SSC. Um, that's either a block or a block and blob. So yeah, it's the TLDR. I'm, I'm not sure where we're at with that. I, for us at Lighthouse, we've sort of just kept the coupled request and not bothered to resolve this um, edge case for now. Um, but yeah. Right. So from Prism side, I don't think it's that hard to resolve the, to basically resolve this case because you can just call the block and blob and check the error code. If the error code is state something like unavailable, you can try the block by root after just like a fallback case. I mean, it's pretty ugly, but I think like it's an okay workaround. Yeah, this is also something that will fade at, into oblivion once we're finalized and kind of firmly past this range, right? Well, it depends by, I think the, the error code, the first, there is an error code specific, specific for this situation there, yeah, but at some point you will not get any, any of this situation anymore. But if you got, yeah, I don't have the details of the error code, but if you, we can exactly catch this situation by error code and just retry in this very edge case that go away, it's okay to me. Uh, one thing is, uh, uh, when you refer to a union, you're referring to SSZ union? Yeah. Uh, right. I would want to avoid something 
kind of dirty in the spec for what ends up being like handling the transition cases here, um, if possible. Yeah, so an error code would also be fine. I, like, I, I think we can resolve this in a few different ways. It's more about just coming to consensus on a solution. Okay. Can we move that to the thread? Um, or is that something people want to discuss? Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah. Um, okay. And Dapplion can jump in there. Okay. And we can, yeah, we can come back to it on next week's call if it's still um, being discussed. Um, and there was one more uh, CL spec PR uh, that I, I had missed before, but uh, Shawai pointed out. Uh, 3145, uh, which updates the max blobs per block to four, which I guess matches the what's on the EL side. Um, any comments or thoughts on that? I guess the question with that is like, should we target this for uh, the DevNet 3 or should we follow up after the DevNet 3? It's just a simple constant change, right? So, so why not include it? Yeah, I don't have a preference. Yeah, well, that's fine with it, me. People are probably targeting master or whatever on on the EIP, right? For configuration values. Yes, they are. Yeah, so okay, we should we, we should align it. Yep. Okay, and I'll make sure to add it uh, to the hack MD just in case it doesn't get merged like today, so uh, we can at least know that it's there. Okay, anything else on the specs uh, themselves? Um, one thing is that um, Ramana, I think, merged uh, the PR that makes uh, field elements per block configurable so that we can have um, minimal uh, presets. Uh, also on CKZG, since that was causing problems for some um, testing situations. Um, I'm not sure if it has been used or the clients know it. I think I guess the bindings also need to be updated, but this is something that is uh, client relevant and happened this week. Yeah, we were waiting for this to be merged and uh... We are ready, already for for the binding to to use it. Can you link the PR? Mm, yep, I'll find it and link it. Sweet. Anything else on the specs? Okay, um, the next up, DevNet 3. Um, yeah, I'm curious where the client team's at and um, yeah, how are we feeling about getting this up? I know in the last week uh, we were talking about potentially getting a single ELCL combo. Um, I'm not sure we quite got there. Um, yeah, does anyone wanna give a quick update from their, their client side? Yeah, I can give a quick update. So um, we're passing for a 44 spat test as of last week. So thank you, Xiao Wei and uh, nice. all the people that's working on the spat test. I'm working on sync that's close to done. One thing I like to finish before um, trying the DevNet 3 is that I do want to like do some sort of local interrupt test. And uh, I'm targeting Roboto's branch for that. So thank you for that as well. I haven't tried. I believe there is time-based or slot-based fork now, so that so that should be compatible uh, as well as what we're doing with the Capella as well. I guess one thing I do need is that um, last time I checked, so the engine API for 4844 is still using V2. So I do need those to be V3 to try. And um, I'm wondering if there's a status for that. Oh, Roberto just said that he just added it. So yeah. Sounds good, thank yeah. you. I yeah, will try next, it today. That comment was actually with respect to uh, time-based forks, but V3 for, uh, APIs were also added last night. 
Uh, thank you, Mofi, for sending a PR for that. And that's that's now merged. Okay, sounds good. So no more blocker on my end. I will try local interrupt today, and uh, and the uh, and the uh, and the uh, I will give give you guys an update. Yeah, could you also share uh, your configuration for CL site, please? Uh, it would be interesting to test uh, with you too, uh, as another mind. Okay, sounds good. I will prepare an interrupt doc for this. Nice. Uh, so for Lighthouse, we're in a similar boat where we're now just trying to test locally against the latest Geth updates. Um, we can test against Nethermind too. Um, and last week, I'd say the major outstanding work was in sync, but we've made a lot of progress there. So now we have an implementation, but it's untested. Um, so after we get like Lighthouse execution layer interop working, we'll probably start trying to make a local Lighthouse network working and see what sync looks like. And then we'll try to hopefully work with um, Prism or Lodestar to see if um, we can get sync working there. Um, that's it for us. Nice. Uh, so we, we start, sorry, uh, uh, apologies. Yeah, so we, so yeah, <laughs> we started working on it uh, more, more or less only this week. So I'm now working on the SSZ serialization and more people will join me working on it this week. So uh, let's see what the updates will be next week. Uh, Alexei? Yeah, uh, just want to remind uh, RLP site uh, has some tricks there too. I mean, you will need it for uh, transaction hash like that, and it's quite tricky. Uh, never mind. So we uh, tried uh, to synchronize with get to run get at least. It looks fine, and we need to. Uh, a CL site client to make a network. Uh, we will try to run such network next couple of days and hope for, we will synchronize soon. And we are working on benchmarks for precompile too. That's just that. Any other client team? Hey, this is Andrew from Ethereum JS. Um, I think as I noted last week, we're like I said joining late, so we're still behind. We, I have over the last week, I've I've kind of honestly gave up trying to get Ethereum JS to cooperate with Prism. Not sure why it's not working on the version on um, the interop, but I'm I'm not that experienced with operating with the CL clients, so I've been working with Lodestar just because I'm more familiar with that one. And we have got it up in sync. We can sync past the sharding block and using the the current kind of um three you know the the block the um, sharding block based um hard fork switches so we're we've got that working we're just i'm working through basically finding all the bugs that i made or wrote in my initial implementation of 4844 so um still working through at this point just kind of getting the getting the block the blobs to actually get transmitted to lodestar so it can validate them we haven't i haven't actually successfully transmitted a blob from el to cl yet but um that's currently where I'm at. So slow, not sometimes the steady progress on that. And we are hoping to also implement implement um, kind of related um, the timestamp based hard fork management within our client over the next week or two. I'm working with Gajinder who kind of does work with us and also with Lodestar. So hopefully we'll have some of those other building blocks in place for when we're ready to join the, the dev net. So hopefully by the end of the year, but <clears throat> I'll just see how much progress we make. Nice, thank you. Uh, I continue chipping away at the uh, Aragon client. Still has a bit of a ways to go. I didn't have a lot of time last week to spend on it, but uh, coming along. Sweet. Any other ones? I think we covered uh, most of the ones that had said they're going to be part of the three.
Okay. I guess then uh, for the next week, does it make sense? So it seems like a lot of the clients are just trying to get uh, things up and running and, and, and fix some issues on, on their own. Um, is there a, a, a client pair that we think might be still uh, more ready to start on the DevNet so that others can, can try to pair with that when, uh, when their implementations are done? Uh, I mean, after we do some local testing, it might work. So maybe Lighthouse. Um, I think it sounds like probably the same for Prism too. Okay, so let's try to get yeah Lighthouse or Prism up and running with uh, guests uh, potentially as a as an EL and um, yeah if if we can get those two um, that'll be a good start. Sweet. Um, okay, then the yeah next thing I wanted to cover real quick is uh, last week we we uh, covered the uh, Martin's benchmarks for for Geth. Um, and um, basically, it seemed like the the, the precompiles were maybe uh, a bit underpriced. I know there's been some work done in the past week looking at that in more detail, and um, and uh, potentially the benchmarks were like a little bit pessimistic. Um, so I guess I was curious to hear from people who've like looked a bit more into the benchmarks. Uh, I don't know if Kev, yeah Kev is is on a call. Um, you know what your latest thinking is there, and then. Um, how we should approach doing this, like generally maybe across more clients um, or, or yeah, to make sure that we, we get the right pricing for, for the pre-compile. Uh, hello. Yeah. So um, I was looking into switching out the Go KZG for a more native library uh, and it reduced the allocations by around 80%. Um, so it seems like Go KZG might not be um, as optimal. Uh, even after switching it out, I was still getting some fluctuations, but uh, I don't know if Martin's on the call. I think this was from the GC. Uh, so if you test it with CKZG, for example, uh, you, you'll probably get more consistent results. And um, so I think that was the main problem. But on the same order, right? Like in terms of timing like it, it call it 50 instead of 67 or something but it, it, it's not changing the order of magnitude right uh yeah it's not gonna like immediately do a 2x um but it might be the difference between what martin was saying with 67k gas and 50k gas right okay um i just ran it on my computer i did an easy recover um i think there's one more optimization to add uh, the EC recover was 42.2 mgas per second, and the precompile, I got it at around 17.9. Uh, but there's a there's optimization in Gnarok that needs to be applied. Um, so I think it can get closer, but I need to do I need to just re benchmark it. And then the, the fail case, there was an issue there, and that actually the fail case should be the same as the succeed case. Right. I, I think this was because GoKZG was basically doing all these allocations and the GC was kept kicking in. Um, right now, when I test against, I'm only testing against the fail cases. Uh, they're roughly the same. There are some times when the GC kicks in and then it goes to like 15 uh, mgas per second. But I, I don't know how to sort of solve that if because you, you can't control when the GC kicks in. Okay. But we're probably more in the even 100 100k is probably very pessimistic and the 60k would be if we end up going with a not fully optimized g uh go kcg um but in that 50 to 60 range is probably very realistic uh i think with go kcg it's kicking more towards at least 60. um the, the i don't know where the allocations are quite a lot there that it's doing uh, we haven't tested with uh, CKZG through Go. I'm using uh, the Gnarok uh, sort of bindings instead, which is where I'm getting closer to 50, uh, like 50 to 60. Um, there's some low-hanging fruit to optimize Go KZG. Uh, yeah, I think 
because all we're, all we're benchmarking is the pre-compile, which is pretty uh, simple. Like it's not any to, anything to do with the aggregation. Um, so yeah, if there's low-hanging fruit, it's not going to be on the go. It's going to be sort of on the BLS side because you're just deserializing points and scalars and then just doing a pairing. Um, so yeah, I, yeah. Once this last optimization goes through, then I'd like to benchmark it again and see if it goes to twenty, you know, which would be closest to the fifty that we talked about. So then, Tim, you wanted to consider how we need to play this in relation to other clients and languages as well. Yeah. Are other clients and languages utilizing going to be utilizing the native C KZG? Because in that case, I think a lot of this can and should translate. But if they're not, then maybe more benchmark should be done. E yeah, but uh, I guess my question is, what happens if there's a discrepancy between the GEF code and the other clients, like? Uh, in terms so, of like the EC recover comparison? Yeah. I think it's worth at least knowing what it is, right? If, because either, you know, A, the clients get, like if there's a large gap in like one client, you know, that client can probably try and improve their implementation. If get is significantly quicker than all the other clients for some weird reason, then it might make sense to like use something more conservative in terms of pricing. So that's, but yeah, this is kind of why I, yeah, knowing that they're all within the same ballpark would be useful. Um, but if they all use basically the same library, I guess, yeah, if they, it, the thing that's unclear to me is like what overhead do other clients have from like the bindings to their specific language and, and how, how big is that relative to, um, yeah, to, to, to the overall execution time? Right. Yeah, yeah I guess, you know, I, I feel like we, we know generally what the cost of a pairing can and should be. And, you know, if overheads are more than 2x that, then I think that's like a sign for optimization rather than changing the price. But yeah. nonetheless, it'd be good to know that so that the optimizations can occur regardless. And I think Nethermind last week, uh, you were kind of the other team that was sort of ready to look into this. Is that right, Alexei? Uh, yeah, uh, we're trying to make some uh, yeah. benchmarks. Okay, nice. And we have uh, Yasek on the call. I hope I'm saying your name correctly, um, who, who can probably help look into this. So, um, Yes, are you in the KZ? I assume you're not in the KCG chat uh, on Telegram. I'm um, not, no. Okay, but yeah, maybe I, I'll, I'll add you to that. Um, if you want to just send me your Telegram handle, I'll add you to that. Uh, and then, um, yeah, it probably makes sense to just get started on on another mine and, and see did the numbers roughly line up to what we, we saw with Geth. Sure, thank you. Okay. Um, anything else uh, on just testing, benchmarking? Um, if not, uh, the last quick thing I, I just wanted to cover is um, when do we want to have these calls in the next few weeks? So. Um, uh, I think it makes sense for us to have it next week and then you're sort of moving into the holidays. Um, do people want last next week to be like our last call this year? Do we want to do one more after that? Um, yeah, how do people feel about that? Okay, Roberto is around for both weeks. Um, Okay, so um, we'll I'll do next around. week. Oh, okay. sorry. I was gonna say I'll be around for both too. So, okay, so let's let's do that then. Um, let's do the the thirteenth and the twentieth. Then we can pro we can take at least the twenty seventh off um, and decide if we want to. Yeah, it might make sense to do the third as well. So, like, if some people are around, then uh, we can we can do that. Um, 
yeah. next two next two are okay for us. Okay, awesome. So let's do the next two. Take the twenty seventh off, um, and I'll be back on the third. Uh, so if people show up, we can have that, and then um, yeah, go from there. I have one more quick point. Yeah. Um, how to handle if people are given consideration how to handle fork identifier and the, the time based forks, you know, essentially an EIP 2124 extension um, or modification. Uh, I think naively looking at this, if we no longer would do forks by block number and only timestamp, timestamp strictly much larger than our latest block number. And thus, I think you can kind of like layer an extension on here where you use the UN64 fork next as a uh, timestamp instead of a block number. Um, but I think we would just need to get one. That's my very cursory look at this. Uh, but so if somebody has some other ideas and then two, I think we just need to agree. This is probably something that we want to certainly by the end of January be agreed upon. It's minor, but would be annoying if it was being a blocker. Yeah, I agree. And generally, we're going to need this, you know, for Shanghai, regardless. Um, right. Yeah. I can knock on yeah. a couple doors of people that maybe the co-authors of this and see if they have uh, quick ideas. Yeah. And I know on the on Alcor Devs a few weeks ago, uh, I think the teams are saying, like, we want to get some prototype implementation that we're kind of happy with and then write like a, a new EIP to specify it, but it'd be good to just follow up on, on where that's at then. Um, yeah, make sure we, we do have something in the next month or so. Anything else? Okay, well, thanks everyone. Uh, see you all next week. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.